Yes, we love it when John comes in for another update on everything UFO. John, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, doing good. Uh, how about you, Dave? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I I uh, enjoyed myself this afternoon. Got things going. My son had pictures for his hockey team this this uh, for this season, and he's very excited to hit the ice in just a couple of days as well. And you know, there's nothing better than watching his face. He gets all smiley when he's like, "Dad, do I have hockey tonight?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's what I want to hear." So I'm pretty happy right now. Now there's nothing better than watching kids get excited about things that they've taken ownership of, you know, that they feel is their own thing. You know, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, no, no, it, it's, uh, yeah. K- kids are a pretty phenomenal invention. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're pretty cool. So what do you got for us tonight, my friend? Let's start off with NASA. You know, the one thing that I, I find very ironic about this whole scenario with NASA is for years we heard rumors of scrubbing photos and and getting astronauts to keep quiet about UFOs that they were seeing in the skies. And now all of a sudden, they're talking UAP. What is going on here? Well, you know, um, unfortunately, we won't really know uh, for a number of years. But my personal hypothesis at this point is that um, this NASA director was put in very, very intentionally, because this gentleman before this held several different roles, including in Congress, where he was privy to a lot of the information that it's possible even NASA was not hearing about. And so one thing I get a kick out of, and I do want to read part of his statement really quick, is that very often when you see when you saw him earlier on panels where he had other members of NASA, he would say things and you'd see the people behind him that work for him, like, you know, like taking like and like looking at each other like, really, did he just say that? You know, because essentially I I, I really believe that what's happened is, 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 you know, I, I, not to get too political, but I but Biden and him are good friends. And I firmly believe that he was put there by the Biden administration to sh- push this from the top. And um, it's it's kind of working. And uh, and basically, he you know, he's the truth of the matter is he's not saying a lot of drastically different things each time he talks, but he's refining it. He pushes a little further in each time he talks and he, he's he's very eloquent in the way he does it. And he did push out a little more information. And that what he said was that, you know, he, he knows, um, you know, that what we've seen is, is what these pilots saw in 2004, but that there's been he claims over 300 sightings since, which is a, a slightly higher number than we'd been given before. So the fact that he's talking about 300 sightings that he knows of, that he's been briefed on, um, that's a little bit more of a, of a, of a wide group than, than we did. And, and let's be honest, there's probably much more than that, but it, it's, it's good that he keeps you know pushing this. And, and I like the fact that every time he brings this up, he says, I've talked to the pilots. And he'll say this over and over and over I've talked to the pilots and they know they saw something and their radars locked onto it. And all of a sudden it was here. He looked down on the surface. There it is. And he, you know, he, you know, he kind of pointed up and gestured. So, I mean, he's very familiar with the testimony of, of Fravor and Alex Dietrich and, and all these people. And, and he's, he's, he's pretty aware. Honestly, I would kill to interview the gentleman. Um, but, um, but what I like is the fact that, you know, he, he stretches as far as he can. He says, and they don't know what it is. And we don't know what it is. We hope it's not an adversary here on Earth with that kind of technology, but it's something. And, you know, he goes on to talk about how this is the mission of NASA to find things that we don't understand and to, and to understand them as best as possible. But he's, he's, he's really, to me, what he's doing is he's coming... When I grew up, I, I personally incorrectly, but I always saw NASA as a, as a, uh, at least publicly, a, a kind of a straight shooting organization where they would just give you, you know, just give you kind of data. And to me, that's what this is like. He's, he's basically trying to give us information as much on the level as he can. Now, 
let's face it, it's still way beyond what the real level is, but he's trying. Hey, I agree that he is trying. And the gentleman we are talking about is Bill Nelson. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, yes, Bill Nelson, but not NASA, NASA director. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I don't like it, John. I, I mean, I'm very at a crossroads here. I will, I like the fact that he is talking about this. I like the fact that any government official or space official is talking about this. But this is a this is a company, or I don't even know. Can we call it a company? Let's call it an agency. I guess that would be probably a better suited term. That for years has had astronauts come out and say we were followed. We've we've heard statements from NASA people saying. Every rocket that we have launched has been followed by some sort of UFO craft. We have heard statements of from whistleblowers saying that they, including on this show, that said that their job was to help wash NASA photographs. All right, there's there's conspiracies galore around NASA and the UFO subject, and so for the fact that they are now playing Navy pilot, Air Force pilot. Oh my gosh, look what they have seen, and we've seen nothing here at NASA. BS. You know, clean your own closet before you start talking. You want to give us anything? Clean your own closet. Make your bed as well. I I don't know. It, It angers me, John. It angers me a little bit on this. So, um, I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I, I understand your perspective. Um, I think it's, um, uh, I mean, essentially no disrespect, but I think at some level it's naive. Um, this is an organization that um, is not the uh, benevolent um, uh, unicorn rainbow sprouting, you know, org that most people have thought of. This is an organization that has held the domain of space for a very, very long time. And they have been involved in all sorts of activities in space. And a lot of people need to start waking up to the fact that there was a significant number of shuttle missions that had two completely separate mission profiles to them. One was, was a black project and one was a public project. And, you know, it, there's no mistake that so many of the NASA, the NASA astronauts are former Navy SEALs. I mean, it also has to do with their capabilities, but I mean, you know, this is an organization because the thing is, is that you didn't want to have to stand up a completely separate organization for every single branch of the military. I mean, they all have to have, they all have, to have space units, but you don't want the, the, each of them to have a shuttle program. You don't want each of them to have, you know, this and that. So NASA became that focal point. And so they've had to play that line forever. Look, NASA Ames is right by my house, right? Once, once for one afternoon in 25 years. Have they ever let anyone from the public onto that property? That's I mean, I'm being past the gate. I mean, sure, you I've gone in several times for meetings and so forth, but you know, no one like you can't just go say hi, right? The whole place is 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 bomb, you know, locked up. So, you know, I think we've had a, a misconception of what NASA is. And so I think what you have now is you have an outsider coming into NASA telling what he has seen from the outside world. And I think while he's informing us of what he knows, he's also informing NASA down what he knows. And he's at some level putting them all in check. Could be. And I hope it continues. I really do. Okay. But I still think he's playing the public for being stupid. I really do. All right. If anybody should not be talking about this subject, it's him. And it's NASA, all right? Unless they are willing to give the goods on some of the things that they have had from all of these strange videos that, you know, and and video feeds that have been cut from the International Space Station the minute something strange comes flying on by, and it's happened a lot. Okay, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist. Sure, I may have some tinfoil hanging around here somewhere. but. Nonetheless, we're being ripped off here, okay? I mean, it just, you know, it grinds my gears. 
I have to say it that way because otherwise I, get, I come close to swearing. I get so angry over this. Yeah, I know. I mean, I I understand what you're saying, but the thing is, is that you know, a, a lot of U.S. organizations uh, are in a position where they will not discuss what they cannot explain, and m most of what you're talking about that they have on video, they didn't research. It wasn't their job. Somebody else did, but not them. So. I mean, all they're going to end up doing is doing, you know, I mean, I suppose they could do what the Navy did and just release videos and go, ta-da, here, here, we don't know what this is either. Go nuts, Twitter. Um, but, um, you know, it's just, it's they're they're in a difficult position. But I think they're trying. I think he's trying. I think Bill Nelson is trying. He's trying by using the other agencies. Like I said, Bill Nelson needs to clean his own closet. If you want to be serious about this, clean your own closet. I, I'm sorry. I don't see there being any other way. I really don't without being rude. I mean, I want to shake this guy, not shake his hand. I literally want to shake him to see what falls out of his pockets when it comes to UAP. And I'm going to guess there's a lot of people in his organization that he wants to do the same thing to. You always, you know, your problem is you always see the bright rays of sunshine and everything. You are a positive person, man. You know, I'm a, what my, I'm a, it's what my life has led me to, so I apologize. <laughs> yes, mine has led me to gray hair early and an overweight and high blood pressure status. That's where it's gotten me, but that's okay. Move, well, I know on. life's hard in Canada, so, you know. Hey, it isn't hard yet. It's not even <laughs> cold yet. Not even cold yet. Wait till it gets cold, then we'll worry. Then we will worry. All right. Moving on to subject number two. Uh, this Oslo, one. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, David Wilkinson, all gathered at the DNI for a panel. What was this no, about? Well, this, 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 gets even, this gets even wackier than that one. Um, so basically what you have is you have, um, you know, you have, as you said, you have um, um, uh, Abby Loeb. Who you know we all know and 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 love or don't. Um, you have Bill Nelson, who you know Dave and I were just uh, having a lovely chat about, and um, who I'm sure would love to have coffee with us at some point. And uh, oh, Dave, you blocked out on me there, buddy. Well, that's odd. All right, well I'm going to keep going, and hopefully Dave comes back to us. Um, but uh, and David Wilkerson, which is which is lovely. Um, but the thing is, is that what got announced a couple of days ago is that uh, Avril Haynes is going to be joining that panel. So this is a panel that will be on November 10th. It will be live streamed. You do have to register for it and they'll send you a link. Uh, I'll provide a link in my notes. And what they announced just, um, I believe just yesterday, is that Avril, uh, um, uh, Avril Haynes will be added to this panel and she is the DNI. So she is a director of national intelligence. So this is that lovely person that issued that um, uh, memorandum after the uh, UAPTF report came out that said, hey, you agents need to, need to get in check and you need to start actually you know, doing something about collecting data and so forth. This is that same person. And so she just yesterday was I think it was yesterday, was just added to this panel. So now you're going to have the director of national intelligence, the Avi Loeb from Harvard, you're going to have Bill Nelson from NASA, and then you're going to have uh, David uh, um, Wilkinson, uh, Wilkinson. And so I don't know how many people are aware of him, but um, uh, he's been in different leadership roles uh, at the University of Durham. Uh, he's basically a, a combination of a scientist and theologian. And so the original you know, idea behind this is, you know, there was going to be some discussion about, you know, what's going on in the skies, as well as, uh, you know, what kind of impact it has on society and, and, and religion and so forth. And so the fact that the DNI has been added to this is a really interesting turn of events, a really, really interesting turn of events. And so I, I, I highly, highly, highly encourage everybody to, uh, you know, and I'll supply the link in my notes. Um, you can just do a search for, you know, our future in space. It's November 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, you know, register, get the link. We can all watch it live. 
it you know this this will be one of those events where it'll be just as interesting to watch and see what they don't say as it will be to see what they do say both what they say and what they don't say will be very very interesting to most of us and so i think it's i think it's going to be i think it should be quite a show i mean it uh, you know it's, it's not going to be that crazy i mean you know it's it's i mean let's face it it's it's you know national television but you know it, it should be it should be quite a run and uh, i have to say i'm i'm a little uh I'm a little surprised here. Okay, so Dave says he uh, StreamYard crashed and it won't let him back in. Wow. Um, poor Dave. Dave got Dave got locked out. Boy, man, sucks when you, you know lose your keys. <laughs> well, anyway, hopefully Dave is able to uh, to come in. I mean, you guys can all still hear me, right? Can I get some kind of response here saying yes, you can hear me, or am I just talking to the to the to the to the ether, which is fine with me? Oh, come on. Hello. Oh, good, good, good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, and so, and then basically, um, I mean, this is going to be exciting. So now, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, which I didn't know we, if we'd have enough time for, but essentially now we do, right? So, um, you know, let's go ahead and, and and cover this last issue, and that gets back to the um, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon uh, book and what all these um, data points have been bringing out and all these arguments that people have been having, and I, you know, I think that. I think that once you kind of map this out, it's it's I think it's not quite as foggy as people think it is. But um, but I wanted to try to kind of uh, put some uh, structure to it in hopes that perhaps maybe, you know, you'll be able to understand a little bit better. Um, so essentially, one of the debates that's going on is essentially, you know, what is this whole thing about, um, you know, ATIP versus OSAP and, you know, where it was and what it was and who got funded and, and who didn't get funded? And, you know, did someone, um, you know, um, misrepresent something about, you know, whether Lou had funding or not and so forth? And so I th I think I can, you know, after debating this on Twitter for a while, I think I can provide a little bit of clarity to this. And so one of the things that I think is very helpful to do if you're going to be trying to figure this out is, is to add labels to what you're talking about. So don't just refer to OSAP as OSAP. Refer to OSAP as DIA OSAP, okay? Because that was the organization that OSAP was under. If you're talking about ATIP as it existed then, ATIP was essentially a, a, a nickname for OSAP, right? Now you could also argue that it was a, a subgroup, right? Because I, I don't know, um, you know, I don't know exactly how many people that were in that organization. So it's possible that it was a smaller group of, of people within a larger group. But essentially, ATIP was originally just a nickname for OSAP. And so what you have is you have you have DNI, uh, sorry, DI, DNI, DIA OSAP, DIA OSAP slash ATIP, and that was the organization before Lou Elizondo took over. Now, he was a member of that organization. He would help out ATIP when ATIP was OSAP. And when that was running, it was the the, uh, the former uh, um, a gentleman, uh, James, um, oh, bugger, and normally Dave would help me here, but, uh, but I don't have his name written down, so I apologize. Um, and so essentially, that organization had funding. That organization had $22 million, and they spent it. Uh, people I know personally have been able to look into um, the uh, you know the spending logs and so forth and see that you know th uh, you know that money was spent and was very well spent. Even if it had not been spent, as soon as ATIP, as soon as OSAP shut down and ATIP broke away, ATIP was recreated under OUSDI. So now it becomes OUSDI dash ATIP. This is a completely different organization than it was when it was under DIA. It's not going to have that fun. Even if there was money left in that 22 million, there's no, there's, it, I mean, I'm sure there's a way, but that money isn't necessarily going to follow them over even if there wasn't anything left. Now, when they, when you get over to the organization of OUSDI ATIP, that is the organization that Elizondo did actually lead. 
And this is why in the early days you heard Elizondo say that in the beginning he was part of ATIP. And then later he became the head of ATIP once the former head of ATIP left, which was uh, James Lukowski. I believe if I'm mispronouncing your last name. Sorry, I apologize. So now you have this new, you know, this new organization with the same name, which is horribly confusing, uh, under o OUSDI. But here's the thing. You only need budget if you are spending money to do things like you are hiring people, you are um, acquiring uh, office space or you're acquiring lab space. If you um, have to buy capital equipment, if you um, I mean, there's a bunch of other examples of why you would need money to do that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's would, would typically be considered capital type activity. However, the office of the undersecretary of defense intelligence, they, they, their salaries are covered, right? Their travels covered, their office space is covered. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they get donuts, you know, maybe every other Tuesday or something like that. That's probably covered. So all of their, you know, general, like, you know, keep the lights on activities, those are covered by their natural budget, like just the fact that they exist. So essentially, if Elizondo in that role either was able to just use people in his organization or he was using people on other in other organizations, he didn't need to have an additional budget because he wasn't buying capital equipment. He wasn't buying a bunch of lab gear. He wasn't buying a bunch of any of those things. So to say that, you know, he didn't have budget or he wasn't funded, of course he was funded. He was still getting paid and everyone else was still getting paid. So what you have here is you have a private previous organization of you know, of, of uh, DIA OSAP that had 22 million because they were doing things, they were buying equipment, they were going out to Skinwalker, they were doing analysis, they were hiring contractors, they were doing all those things. And so in my mind, what it really comes down to, and I'll, I'll include this kind of spaghetti of, of, of acronyms and so forth in my notes, but what you have is you have, you know, two totally different situations. You have two totally different environments. And when you have OUSDI ATIP, Lou is a director in the, the OUSDI. So anything he does, he's still getting paid. And so honestly, I guess what I'm trying to get to is, is that I don't think this is that big of a deal. You know, I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think there's a bunch of gotchas in here for you to kind of pour through and go, Ooh, they, you know, they said this was wrong and they said this is wrong. Um, there might've been some things that were said wrong by certain reporting agencies because honestly, uh, James Lukaski wasn't, wasn't public. And so we couldn't tell him anything about, about, you know, no one could say anything about him. Uh, but essentially that's what you have is you have just a lot of, you know, and let's face it, the fact that they used a nickname for an organization in DIA and then they created that organization within the USDI. That was, you know, unfortunately, terribly confusing behavior on their part. But the end of it is, is that, you know, it's not that, you know, oh, they lied and, and Elizondo, you know, didn't have that 22 million. When Elizondo worked in ATIP under DIA OSAP, he did have access. I mean, I'm sure he had to get approval, but he did have access to 22 million. So when he's under those conditions, he does have that 22 million. When he moves into office of the, you know, um, uh, the OUSDI, now he doesn't, but he still has his budget. And uh, and so, you know, hopefully that makes sense. 